Hey, welcome to the Electronics channel. I would like to show you how to calculate the gains for a differential amplifier, and specifically the gain of a BJT based differential amplifier like this one. First off, let's convert this differential amplifier into just a general form for differential amplifier. amplifier. And I've connected inputs onto this differential amplifier here. I've got my differential inputs, VID over two, and negative VID over two going into my two inputs. And I have the common mode input that is common to both VI1 and VI2. And then over here at the outputs, I've got VI1 and VI2. Now what, what I'm trying to do, or what I want to do in this is, given that I have an equation for VI1 and VI2, and that equation is going to be the common mode gain times the common mode voltage, plus the differential gain times the differential voltage. For V out one and V out two, it's going to be the common mode gain times the common mode voltage minus the differential gain times the differential voltage. So basically what I want to do is looking at this circuit over here, figure out what the values for ACM and ADR. Okay, first let's look at the common mode voltage. So I've, I've gone back to my circuit diagram here and I've got the common mode voltage connected to Q1 and Q2. Okay, I want to go through the process of calculating this common mode voltage gain or ACM. Now I'm going to make an assumption here that Q1 and Q2 are identical devices. They're really close together in an IC, so they'll have the exact same temperature effects and let's see what the common mode voltage gain is going to be. Now I'm dealing with an AC signal here. VCM is an AC signal. So I need to convert my circuit here into the AC equivalent model. So what that's going to involve is making all of my DC voltage sources shorts, making all of my DC current sources opens, replacing the BJT with the BJT model. In this case, I'm going to use the, the T model with my beta IB value, my RE, and doing that gives me this AC model. I've got the common mode voltage connected to the base of both of the transistors. I've got the little RE in the emitter of both the transistors. I have my dependent current source and the collector, both of the resistors. Here is my VO1, here's my VO2, and then I've got my two RC values, RC1 and RC2. I've just labeled them as our two RCs over here, so we can assume that these are the same resistor values. Okay, to see what the common mode voltage gain is, let's go through a th an experiment or a thought, a thought experiment. So if we apply this common mode voltage to the base of both of the transistors, that's going to generate a base current here and a base current here. And the, since they're identical transistors, the input impedance of both the transistors are going to be the same. So that base current, those base currents will be identical. Just writing that out gives me IB1 is equal to IB2. And then we can just call that IB. Since the two transistors are the same, the betas are going to be the same. So this current, the IC current, or beta IB, those values are going to be the same. IC1 is equal to IC2 is equal to IC, just call it IC. Those two currents come into the node and then what comes out is IE. Given that the base currents and the collector currents are identical, that means the emitter currents will also be identical. IE1 is equal to IE2. We can just call that IE. But look, IE1 is current going this way, and IE2 is current going this way. This is going in the same, this is the same path, just in opposite directions. So what we also know then is IE1 is equal to negative IE2. However, that can't be true at the same time that this is true, unless IE is equal to zero. Now working backwards from here, if IE is equal to zero, then ICs are equal to zero and IBs are equal to zero. So given all the currents are zero, then the output voltages must also be zero. So this common mode voltage, since it's the exact same voltage applied to the exact same transistors and they're trying to generate currents in opposite directions, the output is going to be zero. So what this means ultimately is that the ACM value, that gain, that common mode voltage gain, is going to be zero. This is true 
when the transistors Q1 and Q2 are identical. If they aren't identical, if they're just similar, then ACM is going to be a very small value. But for, for our purposes here, we are going to assume that identical transistors. So that means my common mode voltage gain is zero. The second type of input that I want to look at is single-ended input. And in this single-ended input, I've got my input signal applied to Q1 and I have Q2 grounded. Now let's actually label this input. Let's call this VID over two, just like we did in the original picture of our two inputs having VID over two and negative VID over two. And in this case, I just have the one input because it's a single-ended input. To figure out the gain of this circuit, in other words, what's the relationship between VO1 and the input and also VO2 and the input, we need to convert this schematic model into the AC model. And again, short the DC voltage sources, open the DC current sources, convert the two transistors into their AC model. And doing that, we end up with a circuit that looks like this. Here's my input applied to the base of the first transistor. The second transistor base input is grounded. I've got my two outputs at the RCs. And what I can do is a simple analysis here to figure out what is the relationship between VO1 and VI1 and VO2 and VI1. So I've redrawn the circuit here and I put my VID over two as my VIN. And again, what I wanna figure out is what is the relationship between V out one and VIN one, as well as the relationship between V out two and VIN one of T. So VIN one is the input that's being applied and what I'm trying to figure out these relationships and these are ratios. And so these, these ratios are the voltage gains of the circuit. A uh, simple examination of my two outputs show me that V out one is going to be equal to the current through RC1 times RC1, and V out two is going to be the current through RC2 times RC2. Over here, the input, the input is the voltage applied at the base with respect to ground. And what I want to do is figure out what that input voltage is in relation to the currents and the resistors in the circuit. Let's look at this base current. When it comes into the base, I've got VN1 is applied to the base. And this base current, if I follow the path of the current, I've got the base current coming into the base and then going through the emitter will be my emitter current. And it goes through the second emitter resistor and, and out to ground. So my VN1 is going to be the voltage drop across this RE and the voltage drop across this RE. And that's simply going to be this emitter current times little RE plus this little RE. So taking this equation, the V out one of T is going to be, well, IC is the current going this way. So V out one of T is going to be negative IC times RC one. And V in one is going to be IE times RE plus RE. And IC is equal to beta IB1, and IE is going to be e is equal to beta plus one times IB1. Now let's assume that beta is big enough that beta and beta plus one are basically the same number. That means this IC and this IE cancel each other out, and we get a ratio, that ratio V out one over V in one is equal to RC1 over two RE. And let's call this ADS11 for the single-ended gain of this differential amplifier when we're looking at input one and output one. Okay, now looking at this ratio, which will be, we can call that ADS12. It's the single-ended gain for the differential amplifier looking at output two given an input at one. So that is going to be equal to the current times RC2. Well, what is that current? If IE1 is going this way, then it goes to IB and IC. So actually the current will be flowing in this direction and that's the same current as is going in, in this particular resistor. So that is going to be equal to IC times RC2 divided by VN, which is going to be that same relationship as, as we had over here, IE times RE plus RE. So the IE and the IC cancel each other again and we get this ADS12 is RC, I'm going to assume RC1 and RC2 are the same, and I'll just call them RC, divided by 2RE.
Okay, so those are the gains of my differential amplifier when I have a single-ended input applied to input one. To, to make it a little bit more clear of what exactly I'm talking about here for ADSF11, if I speak just for here, if I talk about it in terms of V out one of T, basically rearranging this equation, is equal to ADS11 times VN1 of T. And this gain is, is showing what the relationship between output two and input one is. So if I rewrite that one, V out two is equal to ADS one two times V in one of T. So there's my two relationships. I have a single ended input, but I could look at the output as the differential output. So the differential output being V out one minus V out two. And I want to know what is the relationship between this differential output and my input. Well, I can put these equations, plug these equations in for VO1 and VO2. So this will be ADS11 times VN1 of T minus ADS12 times VN1 of T. Plugging in my actual numbers for these two values and I get negative RC over 2RE times Vn1 of t minus Rc over 2Re times Vn1 of t. Combining this all together and I get negative Rc over Re times Vn1 of t. So this value here, negative Rc over Re, is my gain when I'm looking at the output as a differential signal. And I could rewrite that as my differential output, which is this, is equal to differential gain. Let's just call this AD1 because it's differential gain for input one times VN1 of T. So I've got three different gains that I figured out for this particular circuit. It's the gain for a single-ended input looking either at output one, at output two, or at the difference between output one and output two. I can do basically an identical analysis for the single-ended input when the input's connected to the other transistor. So Q2 has the input, Q1 is grounded. So I take the schematic circuit, convert it into the AC model as I have here, and what I can determine is that V out one of T is equal to the single-ended gain for the differential amplifier due to input two at output one times Vn two of T. And this value ADS two one is equal to RC over two RE times Vn two of T. And V out two of T is equal to the single-ended gain for this differential amplifier due to input two at output two. And we'll find that that is equal to negative RC over two RE. I can also figure out what the relationship is between the inputs and the differential output. So that's going to be this value minus this value, and, and with a little bit of math, I will determine that this will be equal to RC over RE times VN2 of T. And that value would be my differential output due to a single-ended input at input number two. Finally, I can look at the differential amp with differential input. To indicate that it's differential input, I'm going to say that I over here, I've got VID over two, and over here I've got the opposite, or the 180 degree phase shifted of that negative VID over two. So to do the analysis, I need to create the AC model of that circuit. And again, my inputs are VID over two and negative VID over two. Now this may look tricky to do because I have these two inputs now applied to the circuit but I can use the results of the previous two analysis. 
the one where I had single ended at VN1 and one where I had single ended at VN2, treat those individually, and then take those results and combine them together using superposition theorem. So really, I've already done the analysis. So combining the results from the previous steps, figure out what the relationship is between V out one and the two inputs. So this will be negative RC over two RE times the input coming from one, which is VID over two, plus the output here due to VN2. And I figured out that that is equal to RC over two RE times negative VID over two. Combining all this together, and I get negative RC over RE times VID over two. Output two is determined based on the output two due to input one and output due to input two. And from my previous results, I know that's equal to the, the output due to, due to input one is RC over two RE times input one, which is VID over two, plus the contribution of input two to output two, which is going to be negative RC over two RE times negative VID over two. Doing some arithmetic, combining that all together, and I find that's equal to RC over RE times VID over two. If I wanna look at the differential output, which is V out one of T minus V out two of T. So I can take that expression there. It's negative RC over RE times the input minus this expression here, RC over RE times the ID over two. And I get negative two RC over RE times VID over two, as I would expect. This expression right there, that's the gain when I'm looking at a differential output and I have a differential input. So let's call that A, D, D. So finally to wrap up, I've got this table that I've created here describing the different types of inputs you can have, the different types of outputs that you can have what I have designated as the gain. These aren't standard symbols, these are just symbols that I've been using for this video, and then the value of, of that particular gain. And this table covers just about every possible combination of single or double-ended inputs and single or differential outputs. There is one missing, and that's when I have a double-ended or differential input, but only looking at the single-ended output. And I'll leave it to you as an exercise to figure out what that gain value should be. So I hope this was informative about the gains for differential amplifiers, and I thank you very much for watching.